that, that's that's what it'll be like around December too. It's all right. I don't mind. I, I can entertain myself. That's why the course is online, and uh, yeah. you know you can't you can't really have. There's no excuse for missing lecture because the lectures are all there too. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> you always win. <laughs> well, I know. I love coming to class too. I'm glad you all are here. Glad you all are here. Yeah. Uh, call the hotline. Hey, so just a just, um, little housekeeping here. Um, <clears throat> everyone who's uploaded to the forum, perfect. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Uh, do upload your, your paper to the forum. Part of the grade requirement for the course, and I think I know Tim went over this um, a couple weeks ago, you, you need to respond um, in depth to two other people's uh, papers. And, and I, yeah, two other people's. <laughs> Well, I'll do another one. There'll be okay. plenty. There'll be plenty more coming in. So, upload it to the other thing yeah, up upload your paper to the forum. Uh, and, and ideally, what you do with the forum, you upload it the day it's due, like last Thursday, and you got plenty of time to get feedback. And then once you've gotten the feedback from your peers, then you upload it here. So, let's just say you know get that done by Thursday. I, I think everyone's written their uh, summary by now, or at least have a, have a relatively good draft on it. Let your let your peers beat you up a little bit. You know that's what happens in academia. I, I told you that that paper I wrote uh, took four years to write it. Got beat up a bunch before it was finally. It's still getting beat up. The Canadian Atomic Commission beat me up last week because I told them that gasoline was only one quarter as dense of energy as, as oil. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what it's about. Okay, so now summary one is available. And you can see assignment one, problem set one is here. Um, I'm going to move this down into week seven, but I just wanted to give you a heads up on it. Take a look at it now. If it's, if it's confusing, hopefully the lectures we're doing today will clear that up. We've already, you know, just, just looked over what kinetic energy is. Uh, momentarily, we're going to look and see what thermal energy is. Okay, so back to the book. Um, okay, here's another um, really cool technology. Um, a colleague of mine by the name of Carl Borquist is building, well, not by himself, he's got a good team of engineers and all that, um, technicians, is building the Gordon Butte pump storage project. Um, if I were in your all's shoes right now, I would uh, doctor up my resume and send it out to Ab Soroka Engineering. They are building this facility in Montana. Uh, big, big problem if you want to build a wind farm. Uh, the wind isn't always blowing when you want to run your machine shop. Um, so, what do you do? You, um, you build a big pile of water instead of relying on a big pile of coal for, for your energy. So when the wind is blowing and the lights are off, you pump water up the hill. When the wind isn't blowing and you want to, um, I don't know, run your drill press, you let the water. Gordon Butte. Gordon Butte. Um, you know, you just go look it up geographically. But uh, so this this is a 400 <coughs> megawatt system. It can pump. Um, it's it's also been rated at. It can actually it can actually pump and generate electricity at the same time. The the, the there's existing systems like this in uh, in Europe. I think they've they've borrowed a, an Austrian design. But it'll it can pump 400 megawatts up while it's. Um, generating 400 uh, down. So you can think of it as idling, or it can do one or the other. I was going to say, like, at that point, it sounds like it's, like, netting zero. Well, right, but it, well, it avoids it avoids them having to switch gears, if you will. So, um, just stay. yeah, kind of yeah, kind of steady state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying that it can actually produce energy as it's using? Yes, yeah. So it's like a cyclical. Like it is cyclical, absolutely. Yeah. It's cyclical in the same way that the, the water cycle is cyclical. I mean, all those all those water molecules, at one you know they've been clouds at one point in their life. They were probably inside some dinosaur back in the day. You know they um, 
who knows, the bottom of the ocean, they're, they're just there's water molecules doing their thing, yeah. flying around, yeah. Um, but, you know, here, you know, we have the technology to, to pump this uphill with um, electricity generated from renewable energy. So you can think of this as a capacitor. You know, if you've ever looked at electronics, a capacitor sort of dampens out the load. It, it stores electrons. This just stores water molecules up in a big uh, gravity bucket. Okay, so, um, so here it is. Uh, and this, this is just how I uh, explained it. Surplus power. And here they're showing a thermal plant. You know, this could be nuclear, it could be coal, um, or it could be wind, you know, any, any primary energy source. And we've gone over with the primary energy. It, it, could, be, it could be a, a solar farm um, making this and, and running the pumps. Anything that's um, making electricity can send that water uphill. Nice thing about the elect electric motors and generators, they're very efficient, 90 to 95% uh, efficient. Okay, so I'm not going to go over everything in this particular. Um, Is there like a, like a certain distance like for that hill like needed, or like like can you do it like like obviously you do it like on a smaller scale? Yeah. So yeah. So the question is, could you stick one of these on your gutter on your house? The answer is yes. You could. You know, you could put a bucket of water on the top of your house, and when it rains, you could have a little things spinning and making electricity for you, and then um, you could. And you, you, could have a, yeah, you could have a bucket in the ground, you, you could have a bucket on your roof. So the answer is yes. As long as like, water is moving. As long as water is moving. Um, and, but then the question is, and it's the same thing, well, could I have a coal-fired power plant at my house? You could. You, you know, you could have a little micro turbine, burn the coal, make a little bit of electricity, but it's, it's um, <laughs> does everybody really need to be doing that? Probably not, and that's that's kind of how we arrived at the large utility scale uh, that, that that we did. So you you don't have so everybody doesn't have to be a, a coal miner and, a, and a, but so yeah you, you could. In fact, um, we haven't done this particular um, technology, but we've we've made electricity in the Clark Fork River. Uh, last two years, we've done micro hydro, built a barge, sitting back out here in the in the bullpen, and you know it's just sitting out there, kind of Tom Sawyer, Mark Twain style spinning uh, an alternator. Well, in fact, there's a uh, 3D printed uh, turbine right here on the, on the front desk that we stuck to a trolling motor. The thing spins and the, the motor just runs backwards and makes electricity. So, anyway, the, the key that the authors are getting to here are that um, you can have potential energy, energy, and that's exactly uh, it's exactly what this is. It's potential energy. How much energy is there? Well, E equals MGH. And you can see this is just another example. So this, this chunk right here, uh, well, let's, let's do it this way. Um, F, remember F equals MA, Newton's second law. There's, there's the same M. Where, where's the M? Well, there it is. Big, big ball of water, big, big mass of water. Um, where's the A? Well, in this case, the uh, A, yeah, exactly. The A is, is gravity pulling, um, you, know, you know, straight down towards the Earth. That's the acceleration. So the, so the, the A in Newton's second law becomes gravity in this equation. And I showed you here a couple slides ago that energy is force times distance. Well, where's the distance? There it is, from the top to the bottom. So the question is, like, how, much, how much distance do you need? Well, how much you got? You know, give, give me more and I'll give you more energy. Um, this is an example of, of, of um, also of conservation energy. You're never going to get back more than you put in. There are going to be losses. You know, the, the, the generators, the motors will get hot. The electric lines so are not perfect conductors. With like the same amount of water but a greater distance, would more energy be created? Yes, or? yes. If you, if you doubled this height, you'd have double the energy. Because it's just falling. Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, some, somewhere down in here are, are the actual turbines, just sort of sitting there in, in line. 
Yeah, just think of it just like a like the Hoover Dam. You know, you go out there. You know, where where are those turbines are sitting? You know, right at the bottom, and, and it's it's out. yeah. So this is what so there's conventional hydro where you just dammed up a river, mm -hmm. and this is just this is called pumped hydro. This is so much less um, disruptive. You know, yeah, I agree. Yeah, there wasn't a fish out there. You didn't you didn't have to. Yeah, <laughs> and there's all already that natural feature. Some people are like, well, gosh, this isn't this going to mess with agriculture? Well, no. Um, no, because what, what you're also doing is, is dampening out the um, hydrological cycles. You know, when, it, when it's rainy in March and April, you don't need that because your, your, your crops aren't big enough to absorb it yet. So you, you store that, you can uh, sort of... Could you do it with like salt water? Or does it have you could do it with salt water too. Yeah, you sure could. You could do it near the ocean. Big offshore wind, wind farm, you could pump uh, salt, salt water up and down the hill too. You could do it with, with railroad cars. People have talked about just having you know, all those all these rail cars sitting out in the Bitterroot. Just just pump those rail cars back and forth too, and let them as they come back downhill make electricity. Oh, yeah. Put a little generator in every single wheel on those cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, hook them up to a, a electric line in the in the in the rail. So, just just gravitational storage. So the the. The point here is that that's just another form of energy, and it is potential energy, and then there's your, um, there's your height. So energy is force. This is force times distance. Energy is force times distance. So F, F, F equals MA, mass times gravity, there's your force. How high did you pump it? That's your distance, and that's, that's your energy. If you lived on Jupiter, you wouldn't have to pump it as high to get the same energy because there's more gravity. If you were pumping uh, mercury uphill instead of water, you'd have, you'd have more mass because it's more dense. Uh, and then, like we said before, pump it higher and you get more energy. So there's those three separate ways to get more energy out of the same thing. Move to Jupiter, uh, use mercury instead, you know, take your CFL light bulbs, suck all the mercury out. Uh, <laughs> You know, there's, um, we're, we're starting to do that here in town. There's um, working with a, uh, one of my graduates, in fact, is purchasing a um, CFL eater. You know, those barrels go back, they recycle the aluminum, recycle the glass, and they've got these giant pools of uh, mercury they're left with. Does it at least have a straw to extract it? <laughs> well, that's a good question. You know, it could, go, it could go back into light bulbs, but LEDs are replacing CFLs so quick, you know, the, the mercury markets is a little, little wonky right now. But shoot, I don't know. It'd be kind of fun to have a big mer mercury uh, um, turbine. <laughs> I think it'd be wild. Okay, so that's um, that's gravity. Now we really need to get into. We're still using mercury like over in Africa for mining to uh, separate the gold and. Yeah, mercury can be used as a as a yeah. catalyst as well. So here's an example. Um, you've you've got your glaciers. You've got a dam. Um, and again, you know, no, no fish were harmed in this, um, in, this, in this making of this film. And you might even just, you know, stock it with fish. Okay, so here's uh, Francis Bacon. And, you know, I don't really know exactly what all of Bacon's um, contributions were to science, but um, he, he was a fantastic science writer. Um, did, a, did a lot to sort of bring science to the layperson in the same way that I think Carl Sagan has and now um, Neil deGrasse Tyson has. So he, you can think of him as the, as the Carl Sagan of his day. Um, they don't have a picture of James Jewell, but this is, this is more or less, um, well, this isn't exactly it, but let's, let's, just, let's just go through um, Jewell's, uh, oh, here he is, here's Jewell, here's Jewell. There he is. And so Jewell was um, kind of thought to be a crazy man in his day uh, because he actually claimed that heat was a form of energy. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious, um, you know, going back that, uh, yeah, if, I, if my pen's flying through the air, the moon's flying through, or I pump some water up here, that's energy. But is heat really energy? He said yes, gave a talk, people laughed at him, one person in the room, um, what's his name, Thompson, he then renamed himself Kelvin, said, no, I think this guy has something. And so Jules' experiment was um, sort of like this, but a little different. He just had a tank of water, 
get a tank of water and put inside just a um, some, some kind of paddle wheel. So just think of it as a, a, a turbine, except it's in, in water. Got the thing spinning, and the energy going into this thing was actually rotational. So this, there's one more type of energy. Um, and it's just, and the, the energy going in just equals the torque, and I'm going to write the Greek letter tau, the torque, and you've you probably heard of a torque wrench that's just measured in foot pounds or newton meters, times multiplied by how fast it's spinning. And that's the Greek letter omega. So I've already shown you kinetic energy, I've shown you potential energy, and now I'm showing you rotational energy. So torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E, and this is angular velocity. So we know what we know what linear velocity is. Linear velocity is is uh, very simple. It's just how fast something's moving. But angular velocity is just how quickly it's spinning. How many RPMs or how many radians per second? It's still moving. It's just not really going anywhere. So that's that's angular velocity. So the the harder I push, the more torque, and the faster I spin it, the more um, the more energy. Let's just double. Let's just double check that. I think I might have made one little mistake here. In fact, I did. So let's back up. And I, I know exactly what I did. So this is mechanical? It's yeah, and in fact, this is actually power. <coughs> That's mechanical. Yeah, this is mechanical uh, power. So um, just correct your notes. Uh, power equals torque times angular velocity. Now, so the, and the longer I spin this thing, the more energy I put in. Because just going back, we can just say the energy again just equals power times time. So the energy that goes into this tank equals the torque, how hard I push, omega how quickly I spin uh, times the time. How long did I spin the thing, right? So the longer I spin, the uh, hotter this, this gets. So here's just your heat. Now, you could imagine doing this. You, you could, uh, you know, hook up a paddle wheel, go down in your basement, stick a, stick a bicycle on top of your water heater, and just, just crank away. It's got to go somewhere. The water, the water will get hotter. And this is exactly what, uh, what, what Joule did. Okay, so now we've got one more type of uh, mechanical power or mechanical energy. And um, I'm going to write it like this. E thermal equals, now this is a new symbol, uh, C sub P. I'll tell you exactly what that is, times the mass times the delta T. So this guy right here is the heat capacity. Um, that, again, is just the mass. And the delta T is the change in temperature. So what Joule was able to do is say that the torque times the angular velocity times the time equals specific heat times the mass times the change in temperature. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six variables. Um, this one is very well known. And just, let's just look it up really quick here. Um, water. So there we go. Um, specific heat of water, 4.186 joules per gram. So again, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple. Joules per gram, joules is energy. 
mass you could measure in grams. So if you know the specific heat, which we do, times the mass, you can then find out what the, uh, what the change in temperature is. And we actually did this, um, did this a couple years ago, well, three or four years ago in my uh, energy practicum. We boiled water with a bicycle. We didn't, we didn't use a, a, a spinning, um, uh, spinning paddle, but we just took apart a toaster, stuck the element down into a flask, pedaled away with the little generator we had, and, and boiled water. It was, it was fantastic. We did the math and figured, okay, about 30 seconds to boil 100 grams of water or whatever. You can make coffee. Yeah, it, it, you drink your coffee in the morning, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. Okay. And, but, but typically, um, How long did it take to like, like, were you really like cranking? Oh, we were cranking away. Right. It was in the generator was good for 50 watts. And like I said, to boil, um, a tenth of a liter took about two minutes okay. to get it boiling. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there, so we're, I know we're going along pretty quickly here. I'm going to take a break and then we'll get back to, um, electrical energy. Nice. Okay, we got about 20 minutes left, so we're in good shape. We're in good shape.